morning sunlight slowly wakes me up and leads me to the warmth of my first cup. The universe begins to speak, bringing tidings from the deep, a treasure trove of gifts bestowed to me. And each of these precious blessings I'm grateful to receive. When I breathe deep, my senses come alive When I am still, my doubts are swept aside and These four walls that I call home The promise of the seeds I've sown And the joyful song of birds up in the trees Yes, each of these Precious blessings I'm grateful to receive I think of each of you who take the lead You who greet and teach and sing and read when you share a story or shed a tear I hear your voice speaking clear Reminding us to live all we believe And each of these precious blessings Are special gifts to me Good morning. Welcome to the virtual home of Calgary Unitarians as we celebrate our fire communion today. Um, and thank you so much for bearing with us. My name is Mariana Louise Kovar. I use the pronouns she and her. And uh, Lynn Nugent, Jane Perry and I prepared the service for you this morning. I want to give a big thank you to the folks who supported our efforts. Uh, Todd Robertson for our communications and PowerPoint, Mitch Mitchell and Jim Washbrook for, for being uh, patient and calm uh, while doing our video support, and Heather Walker who will host our uh, coffee after the service this morning. We come together in beloved community, guided by our Unitarian Universalist principles and sources to grow in wisdom, to welcome and deepen relationships and to act for a just and sustainable world. Here in Calgary, we recognize our responsibility to be stewards of the land and to acknowledge that we do this with those for whom this is their traditional territory, the people of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, the Bagani and the Gaina First Nations, as well as the Tsutsina uh, and the Stony Nakoda, Nakoda including the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. This is also home to Métis Region 3 of Alberta. 
In offering a land acknowledgement, we honour those who have long been the stewards and accept our shared responsibility for being good caretakers of this land. We acknowledge that treaties were entered into as a collaboration between settlers and the Indigenous people, and that makes us all treaty people. And now to Lynn for our chalice lighting. Good morning. Our chalice lighting words this morning are by Lois Van Leer. We light this chalice on the brink of a new year, letting go of what has been open and hopeful for what may come. Renewed, restored, ready to live life fully anew. May we move forward with intention. And now to Mariana Louise, for our opening words. Our opening words this morning are Intentions and Trust by Alice Lloyd. Today I want to greet joy without a trace of suspicion. I want to open my eyes to the light without a blink of dread. I want to look at my past without a whisper of shame. I want to look at my future without a hint of fear. Today, I want to dance without pausing to think. I want to belly laugh without caring who, ca who hears. I want to open my arms and twirl in the sun until I fall breathless, free to be myself, full of joy that I open to allow, completely letting go. Our opening song this morning is hymn number six. Just as long as I have breath. Jane Perry has prepared a video for us to sing along. The words will appear on the video so that we can sing along with Jane. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our first service of 2022. Off to a bit of an interesting start, but you know, we're living on the internet again <laughs> and things happen. Thank you, Mitch and Jim, for getting things sorted. The first Sunday in January is often the day that we Unitarians here in Calgary hold our annual fire communion service. Our service this morning will focus us inward as we begin to explore our January Soul Matters theme, living with intention. What do I mean when I say living with intention? I mean connecting with and living out my values in order to be my best self in the world. If living with intention is about living my values, then I need to make space in my life so I am able to connect with what matters most at the deepest level of my being. 
poet Don Markova's words resonated with me as I read them in, in our Souls Matters package. She says, when you have the courage to shape your life from the essence of who you are, you ignite, become truly alive. This requires letting go of everything that is inauthentic, but how can you even know your truth unless you slow down in your own quiet company our inner walls get graffitied <clears throat> with advertisements, commercials, and the opinions of everyone who has ever known and labeled us. Turning in requires nothing less than a major cleanup." End quote. I've learned a few things about slowing down over the past six months, and I plan to bring this with me into the new year. I had a cancer diagnosis in June, followed by surgery in July. I have so much gratitude for caring and skilled doctors and a successful surgery. But I must say this rocked my world. I've been a person with a lot of energy for most of my life, and that changed. Don Markova says, how can you even know your truth? unless you slow down in your own quiet company. Well, I had no choice but to slow down. And what a gift that has been. Pace of Grace was a name suggested to me by a friend whose healing touch work and wise counsel kept me centered during this time. A Pace of Grace is, the book, is a book uh, written by Linda Kavlin Popoff in 2004. She became bedridden with post polio syndrome, and she wrote the book about finding her own Pace of Grace that would allow her to live a sustainable life. My friend suggested to me that while a serious illness focused my attention inward this time, Perhaps revisiting my pace of grace at intervals would help me connect with and continue to live a sustainable life and remain clear and aligned with my values. To live with intention, to align with our values, we need to take time to slow down and enter the creative space of inner quiet. Markova calls this crossing an abyss of emptiness, referring to that letting go of all that busyness and distraction for a place of quiet, a place that may feel empty, as many of us are more familiar with constant activity. Markova says, traveling from the known to the unknown requires crossing an abyss of emptiness. We first experience disorientation and confusion. Then, if we are willing to cross the abyss in curiosity and playful wonder, we enter an expanse of an untamed country that has its own rhythm. Time melts and thoughts become stories, music, poems, images, ideas. This is the intelligence of the heart. And by that, I don't just mean the seat of our emotions. I mean a vast range of receptive and connective abilities, intuition, innovation, wisdom, creativity, sensitivity, the aesthetic, qualitative, and meaning making. It is here we uncover our purpose and passion. End quote. Now, crossing an abyss of emptiness kind of sounds scary to me, but some of you out there may find it appeals to your sense of adventure. Here we experience disorientation and confusion as we let our defenses down and open to inner exploration. Markova's advice to cross the abyss in curious and playful wonder is helpful. I have a teacher who emphasizes approaching our inner explorations with gentle curiosity, letting go of judgment. 
and we don't need to leap. We can approach slowly and gently, be intentionally receptive to what arises for us. Palliative care specialist, Dr. Michael Kearney, says that receptivity is choosing to open our hearts wide and to keep them open. Even in the face of suffering, our own suffering or the suffering of others. Often it is suffering of some kind that brings us to a place where we need to slow our lives down. Dr. Kearney goes on to say that receptivity is a courageous and a powerful way to meet the world. To figure out what it means to live with intention, we need to give ourselves time and space. And that, the amount of time and how much space is something that we must each answer for ourselves. What opens you to the intelligence of your heart? Meditation, gentle yoga, journaling, walking or spending time in nature, quiet time in the morning as you sip your tea or coffee, and the list could go on. How much intentional receptivity do you need to connect with your values and be your best self without crashing and burning? What is your pace of grace? Perhaps today's fire communion will give some insights as you lean into the quiet. We will now take our offering. The words for this morning's offering were adapted from John Saxon. This morning, as we take our offering, let us imagine the intentions of our liberal religious community as a fire that exists by burning. But a fire cannot burn without fuel. And it is the time, the energy, the vision, the imagination, the creativity, the love, the compassion, and the financial support of the members and friends of this community that fuel our mission to nurture and sustain a welcoming, inclusive, and diverse liberal religious community that transforms lives and serves the world. Please give generous, as generously as you are able. Options for giving are shown on the slide. Living with intention and doing a reflection. As usual, I started with some research. Intention was described as equal to a loose promise that may or may not be fulfilled. It was alternatively described as a kind of loose cannon, i.e. the road to hell is paved with good intentions, implying that setting an attention, intention was not only unproductive, but harmful in ways that we dare not imagine. In the social justice arena, intention is proposed to be irrelevant. Impact is the only thing that matters. In the explanation and examples of this, I was struck by the realization that in most cases, there was no thoughtfulness at all, let alone intention, that preceded the actions which caused the negative impact. The word was just inserted into the action's justification excuse. Maybe the dictionary could help. The meaning of the word, antonyms, synonyms, Unfortunately, 
This led round and round in circles, with long explanations as to why each synonym was not exactly equal to intention. In the end, I just started laughing and wondering what was it exactly that the dictionary people had intended to accomplish. Now, the definitions in the Merriam-Webster and Cambridge dictionaries seem to emphasize that intention was a plan of action and its result. But the etymology, that is the origins of the word intent and intention, had a different focus. These descriptions stood out. Purpose, aim, wish, desire, aspiration, stretching out, attention. This seemed to imply that intention is what happens just before you plan and act. That intention is the driving force or the way of being in the moment that leads to goals plans and actions that result in achievement. It is what you return to when your plan of action gets really hard. It's what you return to when your plan is sidelined, or the results are not at all what you had in mind given the original purpose or desire. So what does it mean to live with intention? The research left it pretty much up in the air, and on the bright side, up in the air is quite open to possibility. Katie Covey, the Soul Matters Director of Religion Education Resources, says this about intention. Here's what I discovered. Intention is different from setting goals or resolutions in that it pulls us into who we truly are. Goals and intent resolutions push us out into future possibilities. To set intentions, we must listen to our inner voice, which tells us who we truly are." End quote. I suspect that I've been doing it for quite some time now, living with intention. There have been some defining moments that have informed my intentions, mystical experiences, life challenges, prophetic words of others, written and spoken. I live my life with the intention of recognizing and acknowledging the sacredness of everything I encounter as a spiritual being having a human experience. Doing so allows me to experience gratitude, compassion, forgiveness, joy, love, strength in the face of adversity. It supports my kinship with creation and a willingness to balance human needs with the needs of our natural world. A few years ago, I was trying to decide whether I would incur the time and monetary expense of a Unitarian Universalist workshop that I was considering. Whether it would be worth it, what would I gain? I consulted a longtime member of this congregation and a good friend. Her advice, I quote, Has it ever occurred to you, Mariana Louise, that it's not what you're going to get from it, but what you can bring to it? I had not. I was totally stunned. But since that day, when I am uncertain, ambivalent, worried, or just in a place where I'm not sure what I'm doing here, I find myself asking, what can I bring to this? With surprising and often rewarding results. I'm inspired by the purpose statement of this Unitarian Universalist congregation. From the very first time I heard it, I was able to speak it from memory. This is significant in that I am not good at memorization. We come together in beloved community. We're doing this together and we care deeply about what we're doing and who we're doing it with. Guided by our Unitarian principles and sources. Once again, the first time I encountered the principles 
I was surprised and I thought, this I can believe, this I can do. And I became a Unitarian Universalist. And our sources encompass the wisdom of the ages. We come together to grow in wisdom, to welcome and deepen relationships, and to act for a just and sustainable world. It inspires me to bring my very best every day. Now, before you get the idea that that results in a euphoric state of being, you need to know that sometimes my best is just being able to resist the urge to hide in a dark closet. Just saying. So here we are at the end of 2021, living in a COVID infested world, peppered with uncertainty, struggling with isolation, financial challenges, a disruption of our familiar and often treasured activities. Yet we still have beloved community and as much as we sometimes dislike it and it doesn't work like we'd like it to, technology really has been a gift. An article I read yesterday outlined the positive effect of the pandemic for the planet and all of its non-human inhabitants. A reduction in pollution, more freedom and safety for the animals and birds, recovery for some of the ec ecosystems that get deteriorated for our pleasure. Yet there was a caution. If humanity has not learned something from the past two years, that all could be lost in our desire to return to life as normal as we go forward into 2022. Perhaps the Soul Matters Study Guide can help us explore the possibilities. What pulls us towards our truest selves? What guides us to our deepest sense of purpose? Once identified, can we keep what we have discovered in our hearts and minds to guide us in our resolutions and our actions? How will we do that? When January's Living with Intention package comes out, I hope you will all check it out and see what, what it is that you could do with the idea of living with intention. So now we'll move into our fire communion ritual. You will each need a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. I'm hoping that you've made a plan according to your own circumstances as to how or if you will use fire today. It's totally acceptable to use an alternative. Fire represents the creativity and passion that all intellectual and emotional beings have. It's an active force that has the power to create and animate things. Fire is also known as a purifier through flames of destruction. It is capable of renewal through the warmth and comfort of those very same flames. So today I invite you to write on your paper a word or a symbol to represent that which you would commit to the fire. You may want to let go or pure of or purify a regret, an attitude or a way of being in the world that no longer serves you. Or you may want to renew or empower a hope for the future, a way of being in the world that no that that is new for you. We will play some meditative fire communion music recorded by Jane and as you listen to the music you are invited to consider what you want to commit to the communal fire. The music will continue for about three minutes and anytime you are ready you may complete your ritual or set it aside for completion later if you prefer.
We will complete the communion with these words by Maureen Killeran. There is a challenge and a blessing in the choices of our lives. May we in the privacy of the space between our closed eyes, light candles of the heart to honor the power of our choices this and every day. For the choices that have hurt others, may a candle of forgiveness light our hearts. For the choices that have resulted in the feeling of shame, may the light of compassion heal our souls. For the choices that have harmed others, have harmed our bodies, our, our minds, may a candle of tenderness help us chart a new course. For the choices to remain silent when the voice of justice called our name, may a candle of commitment give us courage in the darkness. For the choices to turn away from loving, may a candle of hope inspire us to take new risks. For choices that give birth to a spirit of change, may the light of celebration strengthen us as we walk unfamiliar ways. May the light of this common chalice illuminate our conviction, our compassion, and our covenant to care. Jane has recorded song 354, We Laugh, We Cry. Let us join her in song. Together. 
Our closing words this morning were written by Andrea Hawkins Camper. May we see all as it is, and may all be as we see it. May we be the ones to make it as it should be. For if not us, who? If not now, when? This is answering the cry of justice with the work of peace. This is redeeming the pain of history with the grace of wisdom. This is the work we are called to do, and this is the call we answer now, to be the barrier and the bridge, to be the living embodiment of our principles, to be about the work of building beloved community, to be a people of intention and a people of conscience. With these words, we extinguish our chalice. After our sung benediction, fire of communion, you may exit our webinar and click the link provided to join others for coffee, coffee, and a chat in a Zoom meeting room. <clears throat> Let us sing our benediction, Fire of Communion. Mm -hmm.